if you did feel sick at the beginning of COVID-19, you were less likely to say that I don't feel well, or you're more likely to say that it's just a cough. They were the shocking findings that sent ripples through the NHS. Our survey that ultimately revealed ethnic minority staff think discrimination is the reason they've been hit so hard by COVID-19. I can't help but worry. If I get it, will I end up like them? We invited some of the most influential ethnic minority members of the health service to give their assessment. Dr. Fasana Hussein, who represents GPs, Joan Sadler's in charge of equality for NHS leaders, Dame Donna Kinnair from the Nurses' Union, and two hospital bosses, Ifti Majid and Danielle Oum. What is your reaction? Are you surprised by our survey and the results from it? It's harrowing, isn't it, actually, when you, when you, you hear the testimonies. It, it certainly resonates with what I hear. I hear fear, I hear anxiety, I hear mistrust. Well, it, it's horrifying, isn't it? But it, it's, it's, for me, this is what structural inequality is. What we hear time and time again is inadequate equipment, inadequate PPE, exposure at the front line, and people actually in fear of their lives. Now, it's not the individual's responsibility. As an employer, it is your responsibility to provide safety. Joan, who helps lead the Equality and Diversity Council for NHS England, admits their reaction to the safety of staff was too slow. We haven't acted as quickly as we can, and that's something that we have had to try and instill in our organisations and work with organisations to do. In terms of risk assessments, are they happening? You know, we still don't know that, actually. So, Ifti, so are you definitely doing your risk assessments? Oh, yes, absolutely, definitely. Have you moved staff? Have you actually moved BAME staff from specific wards or roles that perhaps they shouldn't be in because it's putting them at greater risk? We have, we have moved staff, yes, we have. So I'm, I am not in favour of adopting, you know, wholesale, segregative approaches where we move staff en masse out of, uh, out of the front line. The problem we found is, for those not redeployed to less risky areas, many are too afraid to speak up. Unless um, the workforce is properly supported and um, representing the, serve, the, uh, the, the communities that it serves, it is quite difficult for, for colleagues to have that level of confidence. To the bosses then, who've both lost members of staff, feel in any way responsible. I will say that I did a lot of soul searching about that. There is no worse thing than death. So when you're steering death and the impact of this and the inequalities on individuals, you've got to take some action. You've got to do something about it. Next week, the government will publish the first part of its review into the impact COVID-19 has had on ethnic minorities. So it's really now about working together. And this has shown that this is really not just about this pandemic. This is just, it's exacerbated an issue that was there. And if we're ever going to change it, it's now. I think we now need to be holding people like me to account. So, so this is not about COVID. This is about how we manage the reset, how we manage forward in the NHS. Ifti and Danielle are rare voices given their seniority and ethnicity. They know only too well the importance of ensuring their colleagues are heard, represented and looked after, something that surely sounds like a basic requirement. Emily Morgan, News at 10.